Tonight, we begin a new partnership with the University of Maryland Medical System and School of Medicine. Joining us in the studio tonight are Dr. Stacy Fisher, Assistant Professor at the University of Maryland School of Medicine, and Dr. Sanjay Kaushal, Director of Pediatric Cardiac Surgery, and also an Associate Professor of Surgery at the University of Maryland School of Medicine. Doctors, thank you for being with us. Thank you. Thank we you. want to talk cardiology in general, but start on a, on a really interesting specific area that has developed with people who as children had congenital heart issues that were repaired successfully and have now grown up. And when you see Dr. Fisher, somebody in that situation, how are they doing? What are the issues? Well, we're in our first generation of adults who, have, who are alive because of successful pediatric surgery. So the real complex cases really became successful about 1982. So at this point, we have about 20 to 40,000 adolescents per year becoming adults, and about a million prevalent cases in the United States of people that are alive because of congenital heart surgery, so repaired congenital defects. We're learning a lot because it's our first generation. And one of the things we're really looking for is people who didn't know that they needed to be reevaluated or assessed later in life or may not even know what happened when they were an infant. So uh, a lot of times people will have surgery that now we would even consider palliative surgery but at the point at that point was considered a complete surgery and we're finding that uh, they actually need closer follow-up or more assessment or better care before something like a pregnancy. Um, so we're trying to have people understand what they had done and if they're not sure, come for an assessment and find out what really is safe, what kind of sports or limitations they should have, um, and uh, proceed that way. Dr. Koshal, you do a lot of these procedures. I, I know there's a wide variety of procedures, but maybe talk for a second about uh, some of the more common operations that, that are done uh, on young people. Yeah, sure. So um, congenital heart disease, as you hit, hit it, um, it's a wide variety of uh, surgeries that we perform. The most common sur uh, surgeries that we perform are uh, patients with holes in their hearts, and we can fix those, and um, usually you don't need another surgery uh, in your lifetime. But there's also other type of surgeries that we perform um, that are more complex, that we require either pulmonary valve replacements or further surgeries down the road. And I think uh, Dr. Fisher mentioned that um, even though you've been repaired, you need evaluations down the road to make sure that those repairs are doing well and you don't need any other further surgery. We have a, a uh, grossly oversized <laughs> model of a, of a human heart here. The, the hearts that you're operating on are tiny by, by that standard. And in your mind, when you're in the operating room, you're thinking that you know this person um, ought to be able to grow up and, and, this, and the heart itself will grow to normal size. Yeah, you're right. I mean, uh, the hearts that I usually operate on are, are very, very small. Um, and uh, you can just think of it that if a baby's uh, fist is usually the size of the heart that we, uh, we try to repair. Wow. And so um, we try to uh, fix it so that they can live with that repair for the whole life. Um, and so that's our, our attempt and that's what we're trying and that's our goal. Um, and so as they grow, um, usually those, um, those holes uh, continue to be closed um, or they may, uh, they may open up, but that's really a rare situation. And sometimes there are stepwise procedures done to allow the heart and lungs to grow and develop so that you can actually do a full repair later. And, uh, so one you do of those, something temporary with the idea that a few years from now we're going to be able well, to... You may have a problem where there's not enough blood flow to the lungs. So if you don't put enough blood flow to the lungs, you don't get enough flow to the body, but also the lung won't develop. I so see. you may actually reroute blood flow to the lung to let the lung develop and then later do a, full, a more full repair. And we see patients as adults who may have had repairs at different stages of history. So. Some of the issues come, like for example, if I have a 50-year-old patient who maybe had surgery when they were 12, they may have actually had some injury to the lungs or to the rest of the circulation before it was repaired. And that may actually change our decisions and what we're looking for as far as complications. How often do you have good records of what was done in the <laughs> operating room versus having to do some imaging and try to figure out what was, what was done decades earlier? Yeah. 
Um, usually we can track down the um, operation uh, records, um, but as you can imagine, it's sometimes tricky uh, when you try to track down 20 years ago what actually happened to that patient. So, um, but I think the system now is getting better uh, because of electronic uh, medical records, I think that is, uh, will make a big difference uh, in the future. But yes, uh, you hit on a good point. Uh, sometimes we have to piece together uh, different uh, parts to figure out what actually With happened. With this microfiche, I've called retired surgeons at home to find out historically what they might have done at a certain part in their career. Um, if the imaging doesn't make sense, for example, and we, we're definitely using modern imaging. So the imaging is phenomenal as far as CAT scan and MRI. The reconstructions are unbelievable. Let's broaden this out a little bit and talk about uh, general cardiology issues for a second. And, and I know, Dr. Fisher, you focus on uh, cardiology in women to, to some extent. And we've heard time and time again that the symptoms of heart attacks are different in women as opposed to men. There are some classic symptoms that everybody's seen on TV, and I don't know how accurate that is, but, but it's probably closer to being accurate for men than for women? Absolutely, so both men and women, the number one cause of death is coronary disease. So it's incredibly important to realize that this is uh, an American disease. It affects, uh, it's an international disease, but it's really the first cause of death in the United States. Women, it's often nine years older at the first um, time of onset of symptoms. Often when women have symptoms, they have more comorbidities, for example, diabetes, hypertension, family history, smoking, and high cholesterol is sort of our basic comorbidities or risk factors. Um, women often don't have this, which is a pressure, intense discomfort that many, many men present with. I have almost never seen a woman have this. Most women are shocked that it's not such bad pain. It's more a pressure, but the pressure is often associated with something else like breathlessness, fatigue, may radiate to the back or neck or arm, but isn't usually isolated. Um, a lot of women in retrospect realize, and men too, that they have had a decline in their endurance or their ability to exercise or their ability just to do the things in their daily life in the weeks or days before a heart attack. So those are important things to recognize in, in yourself, that if you really have an unexplained change in your ability to function, that's something you should get checked out quickly. And Dr. Koshal, you see uh, adults as, as well as children. When would you like people who have not had a pediatric history uh, of, of heart care to start thinking about heart health? Now, <laughs> I think, uh, I think uh, people need to recognize uh, that we should uh, start to think about them uh, right now. Uh, eat healthy, exercise, and, um, and see your doctor. Uh, I think those are three things that... Uh, and know your numbers. Exactly. Your I mean, blood pressure, your cholesterol. And keep those in check. I think those are all good uh, recommendations. What's a, what's a reasonable uh, amount of screen? I mean, does somebody in their 20s really need to know their cholesterol, or at what point do. do you start? Actually, everybody really should have a cholesterol check before the age of 20. And I think we're grossly underutilizing the resource to check cholesterol, and especially in somebody with a family history. So that's actually very important that if there's a family history of coronary disease, you really do need to get checked and be more aggressive and screened earlier. Speaking of which, if there's a family history of congenital heart disease, we actually have cardiogenetics clinics now where we have a geneticist come to clinic with us and help to provide screening for patients and families. So if somebody had, if you find that there's a, there's a child with one of these uh, defects, uh, the, the hole uh, in the heart, you want to go check a lot of other people because maybe somebody has an undiagnosed one? So if there is a problem associated with genetic defects, for example, Marfan syndrome or hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, those conditions have a 50% transmission to other relatives. So we do recommend screening of first degree relatives, which are parents, children, sisters, brothers. And then we would only screen um, family members of affected patients from there. To go back to your other question, right? Sure. Uh, so patients with congenital heart disease, uh, if you have one child, yes, the rest of your, your children uh, that are born should be screened. And we um, recommend fetal uh, diagnosis if, if that uh, is warranted. So yes, so you would definitely require type of, uh, some type of surveillance. But we're not asking that you 
sur have surveillance for your second degree or third degree relatives, okay. just your immediate. And, and when something is picked up in the womb, I don't know if that's the sort of procedure you do, um, <clears throat> but on, on in the neonatal unit, you, you're at work as well. Right, exactly. I mean, a lot of these uh, patients with congenital heart disease are being diagnosed uh, f fetally. And so um, with that diagnosis, we can plan surgeries. We can talk to families about uh, future surgeries that are, may be required. Right. And Doctors there are Koshel some interventions Fisher. in the womb. We're out of time. We can <laughs> talk about that on a future Your Health segment here on Direct Connection. Thanks to both of you for coming by. Your Health segments are a co-production of Maryland Public Television and the University of Maryland Medical System.